Hello and welcome to episode 24, I think, of the Canis so, Podcast. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure we're at 24 now. Yeah. Uh, wow, man. Time's flying, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> right? We're almost a quarter of the way there. To 100. A quarter to 200. Yeah. yeah. We should do like a celebration for our like uh, 50th or something. Sure. You know, 100th. We'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, this week, so basketball. Actually, the Raptors are doing unreal right now. Oh, yeah. Really cool. Are. Our midweek episode this week will be all about footy, so we're going to focus on the men's national team because that's uh, that's really the big news of this last little bit for uh, in the world of, of football. However, there is some women's news that came out recently. I don't know if you've heard this. So it'll be a bit of a surprise to you, but I think we'll, we'll I'm going to talk about it and get your opinions on this real quick at, at some point. Uh, baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays. So the MLB released... Uh, sorry, it wasn't technically the MLB, I think. Um, but one of the like the, the I think reporters, like, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They released a top 100 players right now, and a number of Blue Jays were on it, actually. Uh, one actually cracked the top 10. That's pretty sweet, hey? Is it Vladdy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Vladdy is, is definitely <laughs> I was like, bad. it's probably Vladdy. He was so close to the Triple Crown last year. Like, there's no way Vladdy is not a top 10 player in this league right now. But they had a couple others. Like, I was a little surprised at a couple of them, to be completely honest with you. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Vladdy's in there, so I'm kind of nice. I think it's like five or six Blue Jays that were on there. That's pretty good. Yeah, considering there's 30 teams in the league, 100, like 3.333 is how many players on the team they should have. The Dodgers had like 20. <laughs> Not really surprised there. No. <laughs> I mean, when you can, you can buy yourself a World Series at that point, right? Oh yeah, it's just brutal, man. And we'll look for we'll, we'll look through that a little bit later here. Um, hockey. I mean, we're always going to talk about hockey. There's a little bit of golf. Oh, I think we'll recap the the match play tournament that happened last week because uh, we left off at um, at the semis. Yeah, at the semis at Corey Connors at the semis. So I guess moving on, can, can we start with soccer? Yeah, we can start with soccer. Cool. A little bit. Soccer on the women's side again. No men's side. Um, Cause that's the midweek. Yeah, uh, on the women's side, Janine Becky has announced a contract, a three-year contract, and it is not an extension. She is leaving England, and she is going to play with fellow Canadian and Olympic gold medalist Christine the Goat Sinclair <laughs> at Portland Thorns. Oh, cool! Yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. That is pretty cool. Uh, she's uh, clearly, for me, she's going there to be the successor. Uh, yeah, she's, she's she going to be the successor. kind of wants to take Sinclair's spot, I guess. I don't know. I, I think, like, she's a heck of a player. She has a lot to learn from Sinclair still. Obviously, everybody does. Sinclair is the GOAT, the undisputed GOAT of at least Canadian women's football. There's no way. I would even say Canadian football overall. She's the greatest player that we've ever produced in this country at this current moment. Current moment, I yeah. believe Alfonso Davies has a chance to getting up there. But I don't think... I think it'll be very difficult for any man to ever accomplish the feats that Christine Sinclair has done on the world stage. Unless the Canadian men's does really I think well the only MCU. thing that will rival is, is if we win... If the men win a World Cup. That's the only thing that can potentially rival what Christine Sinclair oh, yeah. has done for the women's like she's program. She's so far ahead for what she's done for Canadian soccer in yeah. general. Yeah, and exa- I like how you said that. Just Canadian soccer in general, not just the women. Christine Sinclair is an idol for in the entire nation, uh, in in the world, in our fo- like the entire football nation, I guess. Really, mm-hmm. just yeah, man, woman, nothing, whatever. Unreal that that Christine Sinclair is an absolute legacy in this country, and Janine Becky is going over there to play with her. So they've already actually exchanged uh, some pretty fun uh, pleasantries on Twitter. Quite <laughs> quite funny, if I do say so myself. So that'll be interesting. I mean, it kind of like I don't know if that NWSL is like lesser of a league than the you know the women's football league over there in England. Jesse Fleming's still out there. Diane Rose, I think, is still out there. Like we have a, a, a couple bigger names out there right now, um, playing in the in the English league. So we'll see. I mean, it's different, right? Like in the on the men's side, at least, England is like significantly better oh, than the definitely. MLS. Like yeah. no question, right? Even Richie even Larea like the went South from American leagues are. I'd say South yeah. America, like some of them, like some Brazil them. for sure. Brazil yeah. definitely. Um, 
But, like, for example, Richie Larea was the best fullback in the MLS last year, and he's not even cracking the substitutes bench on Nottingham Forest, a Division Two English league, right? So, which, like, well, I, you know what? This isn't a really about the World Cup anyway, so, yeah, we can talk about that. Richie Larea not playing for Nottingham, man, not, not getting any single games. That's just ridiculous. I don't get it, man. He was the best player in the window for the long... Like, he was one of our... He's definitely the best player against... Uh, Against Costa Rica, no question. Just brutal, man. Just I guess, brutal. like, to, like, the coach's eye, I think he's not there yet. But I guess in the World Cup, I guess we'll see how he plays, and yeah. they might change their mind because of yeah. how we play in the World Cup. So Could be. Yeah, this could be a big World Cup for our players. Oh, yeah. Hopefully prior, because, anyways... Anyways, sorry. All about foot. I'm just getting so excited. <laughs> I know, me too. Oh, I cried. I was so happy. <clears throat> I was so happy. Um, Did you, okay, like, okay, we're not going to talk about this because it's not about the draw or anything. But did you see Davies' reaction to... Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I was... Like, that's what teared me. Yeah, that's tear what teared up. me up, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it made me tear up. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pride, man. That is such pride. Incredible. He was just so happy. <laughs> yeah. I love, like, the reactions of, like, Julia Grosso, Christine Sinclair, them congratulating him and all that kind of stuff. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. But, anywho. Um, you know what? Let's, like I said, All About Footy's coming up soon. Uh, it'll be a midweek, so let's, <clears throat> we'll, we'll table a lot right. of the football talk for that. Let's, uh, let's, you know what? Let's go to basketball, man. We haven't talked sure. basketball first in a really long time. And, truthfully, the Raptors are killing it, man. Five games in a row at the moment of recording. I believe by the time this episode airs, they would have played uh, another game. I think they play on Sunday. And they're playing... I can switch it up for you. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be great. They're playing great, man. Like, they're they're in sixth right now. They do play Sunday. In a Sunday. tied for fifth. Right? They're tied with the Chicago Bulls at the current moment of recording for fifth place in the Eastern Conference. Uh, I yep, would yep, not yep. mind having them finish fifth as opposed to sixth. Because I would rather play... The uh, Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics. Because that's who's fourth and, f- or fourth and third right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely one, like, one billion percent for me. I would much, 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 much rather play against the, uh, the 76ers the than, the, than the Celtics. Um, I don't see the Sixers doing very well. Um, you know what? We might even be able to push the Philadelphia 76ers for home court advantage during the playoffs. That is not... That James Harden trade completely screwed him. Poor Joel Embiid, man. That guy's a legitimate superstar, but that that trade screwed him. Let's not sugarcoat this. No, it, it, it did. Yeah. It did. I think, yeah, like the Brooklyn Nets definitely... Definitely won that trade. 100%. For sure. 100%. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, touching back on, like, the Raptors, like, I felt like not too long ago that they were, like, 11th, 10th, 11th, barely in the play-in spot with, like, half the season left, and we're like, oh, man, yeah, yeah they're like, done. Yeah, like, last time we checked, last time we checked, I think we saw, we saw them at, like, 8th or something, or, like, just, just yeah. barely making them to the play-in. And at that point, we were shocked. Right? Like, we were talking about, man, okay, these guys are way over before. Like, what are we thinking now, man? Yeah, right. <laughs> Can these guys win a playoff series? I think so. I think so. Like, with the against the teams that are ahead of them, I can see them, like, push, pushing game seven and with one of these guys. So this is their issue. They're not a deep team. Mm-mm. Right? They have six, maybe seven guys that can play, and, like, at a really high level. They don't have a legitimate superstar yet. Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet are playing like gods. OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, and Gary Trent Jr. are playing unbelievable basketball at this time. Oh, yeah. And at that point, but like that, but that's it. That's like five, you know? We got Boucher who's doing okay. You know what I mean? But like, you have two or three guys you can take off the bench for these for this Raptors team. When, when we won. The, the championship. I don't even know what it's called. The NBA championship. Um, I think that's what the it Vince is. Lombardi trope? No, that's the football. <laughs> that's idiot. football. <laughs> what am I thinking? It's okay. Just what is going. it called, man? <laughs> what is it called? Like, oh, God. I was just too much You know what? I'll brain. search it up. You just keep going. I want to say, like, Masterson, but that's also hockey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, search it up before I make myself even okay. more stupid. Good Lord. But, uh, yeah, like, when we won the NBA championship that year, 
it was the, it was by far it was the deepest team. There was other teams with definite more star power than we did, but we had by far the deepest team. We had a legitimate superstar in Kawhi Leonard, but that team was like eight, nine deep for sure. Like you were having like, and even then, like Ananobi had what he had an appendicitis, so he had his appendix taken out for the last couple of rounds. He couldn't play. We barely got through the 76ers in that round. That was a tough one. Apparently, it's called the Larry O'Brien. Larry O'Brien. Yeah, it's Marty Larry O'Brien. Close enough. Close enough. And Not really. Like Stanley Cup. <laughs> Lord That's Stanley. Yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah. Oh, Lord yeah. Stanley, right? Yeah. Oh, it's just brutal. Anyway. Anyway. Raptors, I, I honestly think they can win a round. I can see them winning a round, They're yeah. not better than Milwaukee. I'm sorry. They're not better than the Heat. Um, but you, those never, are the know, only you two. never know in the playoffs, though. You're right, but those two teams are very oh, yeah. deep. No, very deep. True. I'm also, I still think that the, uh, the winner is coming out of the West, though. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't actually think it might be, I don't think it's Andrew Wiggins anymore. Uh, the Golden State Warriors have really gone downhill the last uh, couple months. Actually, it's been a little, a little sad to see. But you know what? I I have not heard anything about Jamal Murray. He's not back yet from injury, is he? Our star point guard, Jamal Murray, for the Denver Nuggets. I don't think so. No, I wish he was, man. Like that guy needs to come back soon. <laughs> He's very important part of that team. Nikola Jokic is an unbelievable basketball player, like perennial MVP favorite now moving forward. But alone, can't do it. Can't do it alone. LeBron James is having quite possibly the best statistical year of his career. And of his illustrious first ballot Hall of Fame, one of, if not the greatest basketball player of all time career. And they're in 11th 11th place in the West. Like, what, 15, 12, 12 to 15 games under 500? They're somewhere like that. It's absurd how bad they are as a team. And LeBron James is having the single best statistical year of his career. He's knocking down 40 as if he's, like, he, he's scoring as many points as he is old. Like, 38 points a game yeah. is what he's averaging <laughs> the last month or something. Just brutal. And he just tweets, I'm done for the year, by the way, boys. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. The Lakers are done. But, that goes to show, like, NBA is definitely not a single yeah. person. And, yeah. like, R.J. Barrett is out. He's mathematically eliminated from even the play-in tournament, so that's the Knicks took a huge, 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 huge downfall. Um, you got, like, the Denver the Denver Nuggets are, like, looking to be in a good place. But, um, who else do you have? On? Like, you have a ton of different teams, man. The New Orleans Pelicans has a couple of Canadians on it. Like, you got some, you're going to have some Canadian representation. You're not going to have a Canadian playing a, fee, a key role in the playoffs this year unfortunately though that will be uh once once jamal murray comes back next year he'll be the guy though oh yeah i really feel he'll be the guy he's a he's a solid solid basketball player i just really hope he gets back from injury properly you know it's a good thing that they're not rushing him for his long-term success too because that is a good basketball player why would you if he's like one of your best players on your team yeah yeah i know i absolutely agree there's no need in it they, this isn't a team built for this year anyways it's definitely going to be in the future near future mm-hmm Yep, but still the future. Yeah. All right, so you want let's go to basketball or sorry, baseball real quick here. Uh, the Blue Jays. So the MLB released their top 100 players, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. The Blue Jays have about six. I want to say six. Uh, Jose Barrios is in there. Bo Bichette. You have uh, Teoscar Hernandez. You have obviously Guerrero. So that's four already. You have the Goss Gossman. And then you also have. Um, I said Lourdes Guriel, or no, not Guriel. Uh, you have uh, Springer. Springer. Yeah. So that's six already. I'm 30 sure it's seven, actually, then. Yeah. That's still not bad. Two starting pitches in the top 100 players overall. Um, I I want to say, like, I think that I don't necessarily agree with the rankings that they had. Solely because they have Shohei Otani as number one. And I mean, like, I think he had the best year last year, but it's because he was pitching and batting at the same time and he was I wouldn't he wasn't the best but he was pretty damn good at the whole batting component Uh, and then pitching he was the the Angels ace but that's I mean with all due respect to the Angels rotation that's not necessarily saying much because their rotation was garbage like Shohei Otani as a pitcher on the Blue Jays would probably be our like fourth or fifth best pitcher Uh, bat he'd probably be the third or fourth best bat oh yeah right but Still, they have him number one. If he has even remotely close to the year he had last year, 
I think he'd be, he's a top 10 player just because he's such a dual threat at all times. But I don't I don't know, man. I don't see it. Like, I genuinely, I don't see it. I, I His teammate, Mike Trout, is better than him. Mike Trout can, like, play one-handed, blindfolded, upside down, and his offhand, and he'd still be better than half the league. That's how good he is. I'm just trying to imagine that. That's... Could you imagine? <laughs> I'm just like, how the heck are you going to... They're gonna swing that bat, <laughs> <laughs> but like seriously, yeah, though, like no. it's like Mike Trout is so good. I do agree with that. I think Vlad is in the top ten. I don't think he's in top five quite yet because he's still, you know, things to learn. Canadian Freddie Freeman is on the t- is in the top ten. Nice, and actually nice. honorary Canadian, born in Canada, Vladimir Guerrero. Bye. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we got some good baseball players, man. Canada's got some pretty decent arms uh, and, and bats, to be honest with you. It's definitely nice to see. Honestly, with how, like, soccer is becoming much bigger because of the men's team and obviously the women's, but now seeing the success of the men's team, uh, hockey's always been, we've, there's always been great Canadians there, so that doesn't count. Yeah. But basketball, football, it's just nice to, and baseball, I guess, it's just nice to see how seeing all the uh canadians getting better um make like changing kind of like the landscape of canadian sports in general for younger kids just wanting them to kind of follow th- with their dream follow through with their dream of becoming a professional player because of the success of other yeah. canadians so. yeah and it's nice because they don't only have canadian players to look at but they finally have competitive canadian teams in those leagues you know yes. what i mean yeah like finally the blue jays are well i mean we had 2015 great year and we had the 90s 90 91 yeah uh, i'm pretty sure they're competitive most of the time apart from there but now they're consistently and this is they're competing in the toughest division in all sports i am not even going to say baseball dude that is the toughest division in sports and there's no question oh, yeah. about that oh, yeah. all right basketball the raptors have been just overall good their championship in 2019 was massive for basketball in canada oh yeah like the ba- the canadian basketball league wouldn't be a league if it wasn't for the raptors really and how they've been playing well. More people want to play basketball in Canada because and of that. Pe- and players from that league are getting... Yeah. Xavier getting Moon shots. had a chance yeah, with the exactly. Clippers. I don't think he's made it. But you know what? But he can still practice and shot, still yeah. develop. It's still a form of a developmental league for the NBA. Like, there's... Yeah. You can still do that, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, it's incredible order. And the whole reason that we thought about the podcast and the... the the format and just really talking about Canadian athletes because man, like there's a lot of good coming from Canadian sports recently. And it's not just the individual, like it's not the teams, but the individual players are just being outstanding recently, which is just fantastic to see golf with like golf. Corey Corey Connors, Connors. unfortunately didn't make it past the semifinal, but he lost on the 18th hole. He lost, he was tied all square heading to the 17th, lost the hole and he tied the 18th, and they lost. No. Uh, you know, it was so unfortunate. <laughs> so Kisner ended up getting his rear end handed to him at the finals. Mm. Uh, I still, I think Connors would have done a better job in the final, but still nice. And that's also good for his President's Cup bid, because he's the only non-American to make it uh, at, that far. Yeah. I think he's the only non-American to make it past the quarters, if I'm not mistaken, because there was a yeah. couple in the round of 16. Yeah. Um, and I looked at the numbers. I think he's the fifth best eligible player for the President's Cup. Mm. So I definitely think he'll be there. And Mackenzie Hughes might actually also be at the President's Cup. So that might be that might be nice to see. I'm interested in how it goes, though. Because the U.S. have, like, ten of the best 15 players in the world. Oh, yeah. And, like, there's two, there's two non-European or American players in the top ten, I think, if that... Just nuts, man. Just nuts how good those American guys can be. Just insane. But, so I think that's all for golf. Tennis, I mean, we lost in the first round of Miami Open. I don't think there's a need of talking no. about it any, really. They're just not playing. They did not have a good tournament. They're, uh... <clears throat> Sorry. They're making your bold prediction look bad, hey? I know. <laughs> like, why are they doing that? That's why it was a bold prediction. Yeah, but, but it's like, I thought it was a realistic I one. Know, I thought yeah. it... I'll be honest. I didn't think any of them would win a major, but I definitely think they'd be competitive this year. I didn't think they're, yeah, they didn't would think be doing would... the way they're playing yeah. now. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. But there's still a whole year left, obviously. So hopefully they. I mean, and they're usually start slow. So. And they have, what have like three more. They have three majors, majors left. Yeah, so, so they have time. 
They have time. It's they just have they, have, they have to start picking it up a oh, little bit, though, because they need yeah. to get into form in order to get into the majors. And they need to be able to get their ranking up to be having a favorable draw in the majors. You know what I mean? Like, they can't... If they get seeded 12th, then they get a tough opposition in the round of 16. Automatically. Like, unbelievably tough. You got... Like, it's always going to be tough. There's there's never been this much parity in, in the world of tennis as, as now. Never has it been like this before. Like, and it's not that the top players' levels have gone down; it's that Everyone's everybody else's has gone yeah. significantly up. Like, this is the some of the greatest tennis I've ever seen Rafael Nadal play, and he just lost. Right, he and, lost um, to Fritz the other day. Medvedev lost too. Yeah, Medvedev is playing unreal form right now too. Like, it, everyone's level has just gone up. Yeah, gone are the days where it's like, oh. Oh, we better. bet fifty bucks yeah. that one of Federer and Nadal or Djokovic are going to make it to the yeah. final, and you always wake, you always win that bet. Like, <laughs> yeah, gone are those days, hey? Oh yeah, that's just so weird. But anyways, I got something that we can talk about. Okay. Um, so I guess a couple weeks ago or so, um, TSN had like a study of like the ten most marketable Canadian athletes. Yeah, I'm really glad that you brought that um, up. Have you seen that list? I have. I know who's Dang one. It, so I was gonna say, like, guess who? We're... Yeah, I mean, but we can talk about it. We, it's Davies. Oh, uh-huh. Davies, obviously. Yeah, Alfonso Davies is the most. It's because it's soccer, soccer is the biggest yeah. sport in the world. He's playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world. Alfonso Davies is a household name in the world of football right now. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Second place was kind of weird though. Like. I wasn't yeah. expecting this person to be second, which is Tristan Thompson. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you want to know why it mm-hmm. is because of the Kardashian. Isn't he, wasn't he dating one of the Kardashians I, for the longest time? I think yeah. so. I, they know sense. the Kardashians. Yeah. They're like, oh, Tristan Thompson's dating. Yeah. That's it's 100% what it is. I was more shocked at how unmarketable uh, Conor McDavid and Sidney Crosby say, were like, according Lance to those Stroll lists. being third is a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. But again, Formula One on Formula Netflix. Formula One is big, though. Well, like, Netflix show has really promoted everything. And, like, ev- everyone around the world is watching and Formula also, One on Netflix. I don't know what the heck the NHL is doing, not marketing their, like, big stars like all the other sports are doing. So that's probably why Crosby is fourth, McDavid is fifth. If the NHL actually, like, marketed their players... If the NHL then... actually cared about making money and, like, you know, marketing their talent and their superstars, yeah. yeah. Connor McDavid and uh, Sidney Crosby would be much higher. And Nathan McKinnon would be on this list. Like, I would, yeah, like, I, I would they, say, like, it would be, be Davies list. and then, like... McDavid, McKinnon, Crosby. Because yeah, I think Crosby's getting older, but not many, not the whole world watches hockey that much, obviously. But like, can't, like the you, NHL needs to do a significantly yeah. better job of marketing it. But you like, know what like it you is? Said, like the F one series. Hundred percent. Yeah. Do something like that, and you know what they should do? Call the goddamn rule book, man. <laughs> you can't. You're not allowing your players to, to show shine, off their yeah. individual talent. Like just the other day, Trevor Zegra scores another. Gorgeous goal, dude. What a goal. And then Beagle decides to just beat him up because he got embarrassed over that goal. First off, that goal was not flashy. He wasn't being a jerk about it. I'm pretty sure at that time it was still a somewhat close game. And then, yeah, and guaranteed the NHL is not going to do anything to protect freaking Zegris and Troy Terry from that. Good on Zegris for standing up, man. Oh, He's yeah. American. So, but like, but still, I, so we're not going to talk too much about him, but <laughs> good for him for standing up. Oh, like definitely, the, yeah. the, the NHL just needs to smarten up. Like this is the stupidest league in the, like in all of sports. They're so stupid. They, they know nothing about how to run an organization or a league at all. Like, how are you not marketing? Like, oh, I'm going to say it again. How, I don't know how many times I've said it, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Do you know, like, the big ad for the Amer- for hockey down in the States was Andrew Ference? Yes, I saw that. And not yeah. Connor McDavid? Like, yeah. oh, join Connor McDavid. I'm like, hey, dipshit. That's Andrew Ference. <laughs> it's just so frustrating. I just take, dude. like, at least a minute to find a picture of Connor McDavid. <laughs> yeah. Just so brutal. So brutal, man. It was just so frustrating. But. Yeah. And, then, yeah, and then who was so six? Six and seven were Jamal Murray and Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Mitch Marner is eighth. Yeah, but I guess Toronto. Toronto. So. Yeah. Uh, Jeannie Bouchard is eighth. Uh, yeah, and she just spends half her time on Instagram instead of the tennis court. So yeah, yeah that makes I was sense. gonna say like, I probably see her like. But, like, just off, like, not top 10, but, like, maybe 11, 12, but... She has gone into modeling. She's making a lot of money oh. off of modeling. Yeah. Uh, and 
Yeah. I, like, I can see how she's number eight. I'll just, even though just she's be straight not up. Really playing tennis she hasn't anymore. played tennis yeah. anymore. Like, no, she doesn't. She's in a tournament. She's ranked a thousand hundredth in the world. <laughs> yeah. That, and that, then, ugh, yeah. So sad. And then Chase Claypool, number 10. Yep. Yeah. Chase Claypool is being, being the only NFL player, but he's the most relevant NFL player, a Canadian, Canadian NFL player. Chuba Hubbard, I'm hoping, can get there, but he's behind Christian McCaffrey, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Also, Carolina's a smaller market. That is no, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, if I'm Pittsburgh not mistaken. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'm really glad that you brought that up because it makes sense. You know, the world of football is, is it's the most popular sport in the world. Bayern Munich is one of the most popular teams in the world. I'd be shocked if Alfonso Davies was a number one. Just oh, shocked. Definitely. And he's like one of their key players. Yeah. Definitely makes sense to me. Tristan Thompson, you're right. I th- he's more because he's dating a car. He, or he is or was. I don't even care, to be honest with you. But he a Kardashian. And then Lance Stroll, I can see your point with the Netflix. Hundred percent. That Netflix show did wonders. I still for have to F1. watch it. I really want to watch it. But I've I seen the whole it. first season and a half. I think I stopped because I really hate Martin Vax Verstappen and I started winning. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, dude, I'm done. I'm done with this. Also, that that I'm still I'm gonna like take this to my grave, man. That that last lap of the season last year was the most corrupt. Yes. No. Yeah. BS that's ever like and this is from a massive football fan and you know how corrupt FIFA is like this that's one of the most corrupt things I've seen in my life unreal how that happens on freaking real man that's just, I don't get it I don't get it but anyways so do you want to move over to hockey real quick sure. we had a little like we, t- we talked about the marketing of, of our superstars <laughs> um I saw mm-hmm. I went to the Oilers game live on Wednesday against the Kings Oh, you went to the game? Yeah. Nice. And I remember why I stopped going to the games live. Mm. Because the officiating makes me want to throw <laughs> everything I have on in my hands onto the ice. and just Or even just jump onto the ice and punch the ref in the face. My God. Did you see that interference on freaking Fogel first I off? Yeah. Just absurd. And first off, the Oilers also had a couple calls that were missed on them. Like, they should have gotten some more penalties, too. Like, I'm not just saying it's all, like, like the Oilers were perfect in that game. The officiating is the biggest atrocity in the world of sports. And you can't make the excuse, oh, but it's so fast. Hockey is so fast. You have, like, four or three refs on the ice. At least one of them so, would have saw it. And sometimes it happens, like, right in front of them, too, and they don't even call it. That interference was in front of him. He actually yeah. had to get out of the way to get away from the hip check, the ref. I We need Dennis Weidman, man. Dennis Weidman needs just to beat the crap out of every single official in this league. That's just an, an atrocity. It's absolutely and then I don't know if it was against the Kings or the Blues. I don't remember. But that ref getting in the way of Darnell Nurse getting his stick. And then they scored. I'm pretty sure that was the Blues. I did not see that didn't happen at the, uh, yes, at the game on Wednesday. But no, like stuff like that's happening. It's like, how are you in the way? <laughs> how are they? How do they have jobs, man? Like seriously, how like how does somebody that useless still have a job? You know what I mean? And then it's unfortunate because even in the like the lower levels, like even like kids, refs. They're getting abused by parents so that they're not wanting to be refs, and then we can't get more refs. Like, uh, you can't getting... develop refs properly yeah. anymore because, like, okay, so first, yeah, and I like the point you made up 100%. At the grouse roots level, the lower levels, you don't, come on, you know, their refs are just there to make a paycheck. Just let them be, you know, just. If they want to want to make this a professional career, then they'll be good. <laughs> exactly. They'll be good at it. And then you say, hey, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And they're like, oh, I mean, no problem. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, just behave like actual human beings. I think, like, once you've gotten to the NHL level, though, it's like you're the best of the best. Yes, you have to exactly. perform at that. And you know what? Maybe it's not fair. I really don't care. At the end <laughs> of the day, you're getting paid to do a job, and you're not doing it good mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. And Gary Bettman seems to think they are. And that's another guy who has to go. Like, he has to be, no, I can't even, like, he's awful. It, he has to be one of the most hated people in in America, in North America. Well, I mean, the league isn't that isn't big enough in the, in, in the States for everybody to know who he is just to hate him. But he's definitely more, like, one of the most hated people in Canada for sure. I don't know who's more hated, him or Trudeau. I hate, I hate Gavin significantly more than I like Trudeau at all. Or that I dislike Trudeau. 
my, my rage for Bettman is a billion fold. And sure, he's like a owner's commissioner kind of person, but yeah, you're just, you're just pushing away fans, really. Yeah, he made he he found a way to bring up revenue and all that stuff. Like yeah, he made the owners a lot more money, hundred percent. But he's he's making this game significantly less favorable and fun for fans to watch. Oh yeah, I've watched. I used to watch every single game. I'm down to like half, if that. And I won't set aside time to actively watch a game anymore. I won't. Like, I, I'm just done with it. No, yeah. I really am. Basically, if it's on and I can watch it on my tablet on an NHL app, then I'll just watch it. But yeah. honestly, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing just to watch it. And it sucks because the only reason I don't watch it is because of the atrocity of the officiating. Because I, oh, yeah. I just, like, I'm two calls in, I'm like, oh, this is the stupidest thing I've seen already. I, I had to watch TV for five minutes, and I've already seen two horrifically brutal blown calls. That's just infuriating, man. If they don't care about their fans, they don't care about their players. All they care about is money. That's really all it is. Like, and you see, so Eugene Melnick passed away this year. That's pro or this week. That's probably one of the, the biggest news in the world of hockey that's going to happen this year, no question. The next day, there's a rumor that Batman's going to move the team out of, out of the city because they've already. He's like, oh yeah, the next day he or he calls out that Quebec City is going to host five games. How classless is that? Did you, did you not see the news? I did not see that, no. The day after Melnick dies, he makes a comment saying that the, the Quebec, the, the Ottawa Senators are going to play five games in the Quebec City Stadium. And then you have Arizona, who's going to play in like a 2,000 seat or yep. 5,000 seat like yep. rec center. Seriously. What the heck? Yeah, the owner's so the, the owner's uh, commissioner. Hey, what yeah. an idiot, man! That guy is just the stupidest person alive. Really, he's he needs to retire. Like everyone and their dog are just like saying, "Why are they in Arizona? It's not profitable." But he's just keeping them there. I don't get it. That's a joke get. of an organization too. Just an absolute travesty of an organization. And that's coming from an Oilers fan. We've been the tra- <laughs> train wreck. Oh, yeah. Dumpster fire for the last 10 years, at least, 10, 15 years. Anyways, man, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, it's just so frustrating to be a hockey fan now, dude. Like, it, it really is. It's, I'm so glad that there's a lot of football for me to watch that I can just watch our Canadian men play across, across the globe right now. I'm not watching football anymore. I'm watching soccer, uh, cricket. I watched cricket the other day. It's boring, but I'd rather watch it because, it, like, <laughs> at least I'm not angry over how stupid the rules are and how the stupid the rules aren't being well, followed. Because I don't even know the rules. Sure, <laughs> I'll still watch it. Yeah, I'm watching F1 instead. I've watched tennis, watched basketball a lot actually. Watched a lot of baseball. I'm watching a lot of baseball. Yeah. yeah, I'm not watching any hockey. I watched the one game we went live, and I enjoyed it. I went with my dad. It was a great time. Um, but I don't, I don't enjoy watching hockey games anymore. Just the officiating is an atrocity. And we could win the cup, and I'd still be pissed off about how bad the officiating is. I'd be over the moon that we won a cup, and I'd be, like, celebrating everything, and I'd watch the finals just because we're in the cup finals, just because we have a chance of winning. But, like, man, when the playoffs come around, I'll probably watch the first game or two, but then nothing's going to be called. I'm going to be pissed off about it because there's no, like, what's the point of a rule book? So I'm just, honestly, I'm just hoping, like, next year we get a bunch of, like, you know, tout, like, canes, a lot of canes, and just two-handed stick people in the back of their heads and just win games like that. Because that's not going to get called in the NHL playoffs. Apparently not, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I wonder what it's going to take for them to smarten up. I really do, because I, I don't know what's wrong anymore. Like, it's... The officiating is just a travesty. There's a couple games where we've had good officiating, and those were very fun to watch, because they, they either they consistently let things go, or, like, the most blatant calls they would at least call. You know what I mean? Like, the little hooking? No. Right, but when you're like manhandling on top, you're on top of a guy, you're like two hands on top, like just hug- bear hugging him, and he's skating down the ice. You're like, no one better play on. Yeah, like, even saw, even saw like a, a video of like McDavid even doing that, and he did, there was no call. Like, there's, it's just, like, yeah, he like he's taking it to himself, like just mm-hmm. because he's not getting called, might as well just do it or whatever. But he's yeah. not getting called doing that either, and it's just, it's infuriating. Refs are just letting everything go, and it's just. Yep. Not fun to watch anymore. Nope. I agree. No. It's just awful to watch. But he doesn't care. He doesn't listen to anyone, so whatever. What's the point, right? Yeah. But, I mean, um, 
the, the playoffs are pretty much are, have been set in. Actually, I've never seen it like this. The playoffs have been set in the East since like November. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Like there hasn't been any. Like there's been changes between first and eighth, but there hasn't been changes between eight and nine. I'm pretty sure since November. That's just nuts to me. No, yeah, I I seen these same eight teams like just yeah. Just so, changing I mean, around themselves, but it's like it's it's set. I think Toronto actually might be a wild card. They're mm-hmm. not making it out of the first round this year. Their only hope was to finish second in there in the Atlantic. Their only hope, because they're I'm sorry, they're not beating either Boston or Tampa Bay this year, and they're definitely not beating Carolina or Florida. Those are exceptional teams, man. Like and right now the they're one wild. point behind. Um, Boston. No. Tampa. Tampa. But still, like. They're not going to beat Tampa. No, no. But they're not even going to play Tampa. Or are they are they third right it's now in the third. Atlantic? They're third in the Atlantic. Oh yeah. Well, Boston's right behind them though. Boston like, right behind, behind two points. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's actually Boston lost to Toronto the other day, so that was a big one. Yeah, Boston's beating them, man. There's like, sorry, Toronto is not making beating. it. No, I'm sorry. Like I'm saying, everyone is. Oh, Boston, yeah. Tampa, Carolina, Florida. The only team they might have a chance against would be, like, Washington. But even then, like, you're not playing Washington. Right? And then on the West, you have... Calgary has a good chance of making it past the first round. Um, but again, they have the same issues as Toronto. They just don't show up in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. And then they haven't had to show up in the second because they just don't make it past the second round. Like, or past the first round, like, ever. Edmonton looks to be in. They're in the driver's seat of their of their playoff hopes right now. I mean, Vegas keeps on winning behind them, so that's like their only competition. Because uh, Vancouver's pretty much out. Winnipeg's out, but Winnipeg wouldn't compete with Edmonton directly. It's really between Edmonton, Vegas, LA, and Vancouver for the last two um, Pacific spots. Because yeah, like, they're not going to get the wild card. No, the no. wild card is going to the Central. There's no question. Uh, and then Winnipeg is completely out now, man. They had to go ten two and one just to have a chance at making it, and that's not finished. They're not finishing that right now. I've no like that defense was just porous this year. But I, well, I'm, I'm interested. Like maybe we can uh, hopefully when the playoffs get announced and like when we have more more of an understanding, we can like do our midweek episode, or we can do like it's just a full on episode on just like playoff previews, and we'll see the next episode. It's like next week we're gonna have to do uh, to see how our fantasy teams did. By the way, we're gonna have to actually oh, yeah, announce okay. it. I'm done, just yeah. like just yeah. a, an update. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's essentially the final end of the year update, pretty much. Well, we'll just wait until it's done. Yeah, though. we might as well finish. At the end. <laughs> might as well wait until yeah. it's done. I'm just interested to see how we did, but well, that will be pretty cool to see. But, anyways, I think that's it for me today. Is there anything that you want to add? Um. Not really. We can end it with our person or player of the week. Of the week? I like yeah. that, yes. Uh, you're going to go yeah, first. You have to, get, you have to get used to it because you keep I know, forgetting. I keep on forgetting, <laughs> so you you got to give me a second to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, gee, I, I, I don't have one ready either, but... <laughs> but you just what do you have mean to... you don't have one ready? I'm not ready this time. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with my person of the week. Uh, it's going to be Connor McDavid. I mean, super easy cop-out way. But he is on his fifth consecutive 100-point season on Wednesday. He he got the 100-point mark uh, in, in the win against the LA Kings. Um, five consecutive. And now if he gets... So he's in the top, I think it's 16 of all time NHL players in 100-point seasons. Yeah, with five. With five. Yeah. When he's six, he's in the top six yep. of yep. all time. Yep. Uh, like very few people. And except, like, what, I think like it's what? Yeah, he's 25 this year, isn't that nice? Yeah, so... Mario uh, Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky, obviously. Um, Marcel Dion. Marcel Dion, probably. Phil Esposito, I think, was up there. And, uh, um, oh, I forget who also it would have been. But just, that was, that's it. That's all for 100-point seasons. Like, isn't that insane? That is insane. So that's, that has to, like, maybe he didn't, like, he's he's averaging two points a week the last two weeks. Um, so, like, so no... kind of has to, but, yeah. yeah. No, like, unreal, ridiculous individual performance. I mean, two points a game for a week is pretty darn good in its own right, but we're just so used to it now that we're just, it's, ah, whatever, it's average now. Yeah. Which we're spoiled in that, in that yeah, like, sense. Isn't, like, his March 
He's like yeah, his March is like 1.5 or, uh, 1. or 1.6. Yeah, he's ab- un- absurd in March. I wish he was absurd in April, May, and June. <laughs> He'll if get we to make that it to point. April, May, and June. Yeah. If we have consistent goaltending. Yeah, we're not going to touch on that no. this week. There's too no. much to talk about. Yeah. Maybe we'll have that as a midweek episode next Another, week. Another what the heck is wrong with the Oilers? No, just, hey, when are we going to call Skinner up? <laughs> That's just That's gonna the, be what the, the heck episode. is wrong with the Oilers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so um, even McDavid, and then, yeah, five five 100-point seasons in a row. It would have been six if Brandon Manning didn't take him oh, out like yeah. that. He would have definitely had a 100-point season. He's um he's already cemented himself as one of the, math, statistically speaking, he's already top top 20 players in the entire history of the NHL. And he's only going to get better from here. I honestly feel he will cement himself definitely top 10, potentially top 5. Yeah, I was going to say, like, He's only 25 and he already has five. If he keeps playing like he is playing another five years, he'll have 10. And another five years at 35, he'll be 15. Yeah. Which, how much does Gretzky have? Like 16? Or yeah, but he's... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, that Gretzky record is not going to be touched. No, though. but like, no, 100-point seasons. Yeah, 15 100-point seasons. That's not going to get touched. McDavid, probably. 15 100... He needs to be getting 100 points at the age of 35. Yeah. That's a bold it's prediction. It's McDavid, though. I get it, but that's that's I it's don't McDavid, know. and if he has like good players around McDavid him, McDavid will be at the end of this at the end of his career a top ten player in the history of the NHL. Oh, I don't think there's a single question about that. Will he break? He might break a couple of records. One hundred. I, I believe that he might break a couple of records, but I'm, he's not going to break the most one hundred point seasons record. There's, I can see that. I, sure. Okay. If you can see that, <laughs> then that's fine. You, you, have, you have the right to your opinion. I don't see that at all. That That is almost as unbreakable as a 50 goals in 39 games. Or the 200 um, and some point season. That's not happening. Like, if, imagine. Like, it doesn't matter who breaks it, but imagine someone breaks 50 and 39. You know what, it was, it's, what it's going to take? Mm. If... If the Oilers' power play starts the way it did this year and is consistent like that for an entire season, at that point, and only at that point, do I think one of McDavid or Drysaddle will be able to break one of those bigger records. It's going to be Drysaddle because McDavid The goals one? 100%. Yeah, because McDavid doesn't... Drysaddle has the best chance, not named Matthews, I think, yeah, not named Matthews to break break 50 and 50. No, 50 and 50. 50 and 50 is a real accomplishment, right? But 50 and 39. That's never happening. No. I'm sorry. That's never going to happen. No. I mean, if it gets broken, then I will... Yeah, whatever. I'll acknowledge that I was wrong. 100%. <laughs> Who's yours? Okay. Mine. Because um, I wanted to talk about him before we were ending the podcast. But since we're in our persons of the week. And I'm going to count last Saturday as part of that week. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, say Mark andre Fleury. Because yep. his two games that he played with Minnesota, he had a .92 save percentage versus Columbus and a .97 against Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And yes, he's playing with superb defense compared to Chicago. And against two weak teams, but and against two weak teams, but still, like yeah, night and day difference between yeah. Chicago and uh, Chicago Flurry and Minnesota, and Minnesota. Flurry. Yeah, and just looking at how Minnesota is playing, like holy crap. That's a good team, That's man. A good team. They're gonna com- they they're gonna give Colorado a run for their money. Yeah, like like I said, and I don't know if it was you or some of my friends. They're like, they can't beat Colorado in in a seven game series with how Flurry is playing right now, and how Talbot has been playing all year, and how McKinnon broke his hand. <laughs> well, if he comes back for the for the series, but still, like. Yeah. They have a good chance. I agree. I agree. I think it'll be a tough... Uh, I believe it'll be a tough battle, to say the least. Yeah. I like that. I think Fleury is a heck of a player. I hope he comes back next year. Uh, I'd love to see him not retire. You know, The reigning yeah. Vesna winner deserves another ch- a chance at okay. continuing. Honorable right? mention, Cam Talbot, I guess. Because he... Last five games... Or, I guess, last four games he's played. He's won all of them. His saber percentage hasn't dropped below .92 in those four games. He has one shutout, and one of them is a .929 against Vancouver. Sure, fine. But .952 for against Colorado. Mm-hmm. 
So I guess that'll be my honorable mention. Cool. But yeah, just Minnesota, I guess, with the two goalies. <laughs> well, the Canadian duo of Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota goal yeah, yes, go there that. we go. <laughs> and my honorable mention will be still Connor McDavid because he's that Connor good. McDavid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, anyways, thank you everybody for listening to our Canass podcast. We don't have the uh, the new song quite yet, so we're stuck with my jingle, I guess, the unofficial jingle of the Canass <laughs> podcast. And uh, you gotta you gotta sing it at one point, also. You got it's gotta be you at one point. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the uh, podcast episode. Are you going to do it? No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening to the uh, podcast episode this week. Canada's podcast episode, I believe it's 24. I'll cor- if it's not 24, I'm just going to correct it in the description. So, yeah, make sure to read the description if we're wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you later on this week with the All About Footy episode 6. Thank you very much, and we'll see you later. <laughs>